Welcome to part two of my status guide. If you haven't watched the first part, I recommend you do that because that covers everything all players should know. Well, this is more of a bonus for those who like to know every little detail. In this video, I will be covering the math involved in these status effects. I did this for the sake of saving timing in that video instead of going over every formula in it since most people won't care. As such, this video will be more of a lecture for those that care about the math and nothing more. There's a few things you want to know before we dive into the math. First, rounding in this game is pretty strange. Sometimes it'll round numbers up that would normally be rounded up, and conversely, sometimes doesn't round numbers that should. More often than not, this doesn't lead to a massive difference in damage, so you'll need to decide for yourself where the rounding is done, as the game doesn't tell us. Sometimes it'll round halfway through the equation, sometimes it won't round at all. Secondly, we must follow the order of operations rules to fill in it and complete the formulas we use. An order of operations guide will be listed in the description below if you'd like to learn how to fill it out and solve it yourself, or you can try and follow along and learn as we go. Lastly, when we insert numbers that are typically percents in the game, you must convert the percents to decimals. To convert the percents to decimals, you simply add a decimal to the end of the number and move it over two places to the left. Let's start doing the math. There's a formula that is used in most of the other formulas we'll be using. This formula is called the modded base damage. Modded base damage equals base damage times one plus base damage bonuses times one plus faction damage bonuses. So the first step to this is to figure out your weapon's base damage. With no mods equipped, your total damage is listed at the bottom of the stats on the mod page for the weapon or in the bottom right when selecting it in the weapons list. You then insert that number into the formula and continue. In this case, the Bratton Prime has a base damage of 35. The next section we need to fill in is in the parentheses where it says one plus base damage bonuses. So things like serration and heavy caliber would go here as they are base damage modifiers, whereas things like elemental mods are not considered a base damage bonus. So if we have a max serration, we know that it is a 165% bonus. We now need to convert that to a decimal. To convert the percent to a decimal, we add a decimal to the end of the number and then shift it two places to the left. That gives us 1.65. Now we can add that 1.65 as a base damage bonus to the formula. If we add other bonuses like heavy caliber on top of this, we would simply add another 1.65 to the equation or whatever the number would be and then solve as normal. I won't be including heavy caliber for this example. The next section we need to fill in is the next parentheses where it says one plus faction damage bonuses. Things like Bane mods go here. We know that a max Bane of Grenier is 30%, so we must convert this to a decimal and simply plug it into the formula. If no faction damage mod is present, you simply omit this entire spot from the formula and continue as normal. In this example, we will use a 30% Bane of Grenier. Now we have everything we need to solve this formula for this example. With the order of operations, we know that we need to do the parentheses first, which leaves us with 1 plus 1.65, which equals 2.65, and 1 plus 0.3, which equals 1.3. With the order of operations, we know that multiplication must be solved from left to right. Now that we don't have any parentheses to deal with, and that will give us our modded base damage. 35 times 2.65 times 1.3 will give us 92.75 times 1.3, which will then give us 120.575. In terms of rounding this number, this number isn't always rounded in the formula. In this example, it isn't, but this isn't always the case. So our final answer is 120.575. Now that we know how to calculate mod base damage, we can apply that to any weapon and to any formula that requires it. Let's go over those formulas. First, we'll start with slash and its formula. Slash makes a bleed status effect on an enemy, and to determine how much each tick will hit for, we first need to determine if it's from an ability or a weapon. If it's from an ability, the bleed tick is simply 35% of the ability's modified damage. So you take the damage number, then multiply it by 0.35, because 35% as a decimal is 0.35, and that is what the bleed damage will be. Keep in mind, things like Roar will apply twice here if it's on, once if the initial hit happens with Roar on, and once again if the tick damage happens with Roar on. For weapon bleed damage, we need to follow the following formula. Slash proc damage per tick equals 0.35 times modded base damage times one plus faction damage bonuses times additional multipliers. Let's start filling this out. To start, we have modded base damage. For the modded base damage, I'll be using our example I calculated in the previous section, which we determined to be 120.575. The next section we need to fill in is faction damage bonuses. We have this again because faction damage bonus is applied twice when accounting for bleed tick damage. So again, like in the previous formula, we are using a Bane of Grenier, which is 30%, and when converted to a decimal, is 0.3. The last thing we need to fill in is the additional multipliers. This includes things like headshot multipliers, the crit multiplier of the weapon, etc. 
In this case, we have a 2x crit multiplier, but this is only applied if we do score a crit. I won't be getting a headshot for this example, but in that case, most headshot multipliers are 3x. So you'd multiply these multipliers together, then insert it into the formula and solve normally. Keep in mind that some enemies have a critical headshot damage bonus, which results in the final number being multiplied by an additional 2x if a crit was scored with a headshot. Now that everything is filled out, we can start using our order of operations, which tells us to solve the parentheses first. The only parentheses we have is 1 plus 0.3, which equals 1.3. Next, we solve the multiplication left to right, which leaves us with 0 0.35 times our modded base damage, which is 120.575. This leaves us with 42.20125 times 1.3 times any additional multipliers we want. This gives us 54.861625, which is rounded up to 55. This leaves us with a bleed proc of 55 or 110 if we get a crit with a multiplier of 2. Next up, we have the heat burn damage formula. Heat makes a burning status effect on an enemy, and to determine how much each tick will hit for, first need to determine if it's from an ability or a weapon. If it's from an ability, the heat tick is simply 50% of the ability's modified damage. So you take the damage number, then multiply it by 0.5, because 50% as a decimal is 0.5, and that is what the burn damage will be. Keep in mind, things like roar will apply twice here if it's on, once if the initial hit happens with roar on, and once again if the tick damage happens with roar on. For weapon burn damage, we need to follow the following formula. Heat proc damage per tick equals 0.5 times modded base damage times 1 plus heat damage bonuses times 1 plus faction damage bonuses times additional multipliers. Let's start filling this out. To start, we have modded base damage. For the modded base damage, I'll be using Boltor Prime with Serration and Heavy Caliber for a 197.8 modded base damage. Next, we need to fill in the heat damage bonuses. Heat damage bonuses are any mod that adds the heat damage, so in this case, we will use Hellfire and Thermite Rounds, which is 90% and 60% respectively. They stack additively with each other in the equation, which results in 1 plus 0.9 plus 0.6 after converting the percents to decimals. The next section we need to fill in is Faction Damage Bonuses. We have this again because Faction Damage Bonus is applied twice when accounting for Burn Tick Damage. In this example, we are not using a Bane mod, so we will omit this from our equation. The last thing we need to fill in is the additional multipliers. This includes things like headshot multipliers, the crit multiplier of the weapon, etc. In this case, we have a 2x crit multiplier, but this is only applied if we do score a crit. I won't be getting a headshot for this example, but in that case, most headshot multipliers are 3x. So you'd multiply these multipliers together, then insert it into the formula and solve normally. Keep in mind that some enemies have a critical headshot damage bonus, which results in the final number being multiplied by an additional 2x if a crit was scored with a headshot. Now that everything is filled out, we can start using our order of operations, which tells us to solve the parentheses first. The only parentheses we have is 1 plus 0.9 plus 0.6. Next, we solve the multiplication left to right, which leaves us with 0 0.5 times modded base damage, which I determined to be 197.8 for our example. This leaves us with 98.9 times 2.5 times any additional multipliers we may want. This gives us 247.25, which is rounded up to 248 normally, but... For whatever reason, they must have done some rounding elsewhere, and we end up with 249 instead. I've tried rounding this equation in various spots, and it is always off when using the standard rounding rules. It's almost like they don't use it. Anyway, this leaves us with a burn proc of 249 in-game, or 496 if we get a crit with a multiplier of 2. Heat doesn't round each number when accounting for multiple stacks, only the final. This means that if we were to account for 6 heat procs using our example, it would be 247.25 times 6 and not 249 times 6. This gives us 1483.5, which rounds up to 1484. Then, again, for some reason, Warframe adds an additional whole number to the final number, making it appear as 1485 in-game. Now we have the Toxin Poison Damage formula. Toxin makes a poison status effect on an enemy, and to determine how much each tick will hit for it, we first need to determine if it's from an ability or weapon. If it's from an ability, the Toxin tick is simply 50% of the ability's modified damage, so you take the damage number, then multiply it by 0.5, because 50% as a decimal is 0.5, and that is what the poison damage will be. Keep in mind things like Roar will apply twice here if it's on, once if the initial hit happens with Roar on, and once again if the tick damage happens with Roar on. For weapon toxin tick damage, we need to follow the following formula. 
Toxin proc damage per tick equals 0.5 times mod base damage times 1 plus toxin damage bonuses times 1 plus faction damage bonuses times additional multipliers. This is actually the exact same formula as the heat damage calculation. Due to this, I won't be covering it again to save time. Follow the previous section pretending I am talking about toxin and you should be just fine. Keep in mind though that heat refreshes and adds its proc to damage to the previous tick damage, while toxin will actually all proc separately like slash. Next is the electric shock damage formula. Electricity makes a Tesla chain status effect on an enemy, and to determine how much each tick will hit for, we first need to determine if it's from an ability or a weapon. If it's from an ability, the electric tick is simply 50% of the ability's modified damage. So you take the damage number, then multiply it by 0.5, because 50% as a decimal is 0.5, and that is what the electric tick damage will be. Keep in mind, things like Roar will apply twice here if it's on, once if the initial hit happens with Roar on, and once again if the tick damage happens with Roar on. For weapon electric tick damage, we need to follow the following formula. Electric proc damage per tick equals 0.5 times modded base damage times 1 plus electric damage bonuses times 1 plus faction damage bonuses times additional multipliers. This is also the exact same formula as the heat and toxin damage calculation. Due to this, I won't be covering it again to save time. Follow that section, pretending I am talking about electricity, and you should be just fine. Keep in mind though that heat refreshes and adds its proc damage to the previous tick damage, while electric adds its proc damage to the previous tick damage, but expires separately and does not refresh the procs like heat. Lastly, for the damage over time formulas, we have the gas cloud damage formula. Gas makes a gas cloud status effect on an enemy, and to determine how much each tick will hit for, we first need to determine if it's from an ability or a weapon. If it's from an ability, the gas tick damage is simply 50% of the ability's modified damage, so you take the damage number, then multiply it by 0.5, because 50% as a decimal is 0.5, and that is what the gas tick damage will be. I don't actually even know if there's any abilities that do gas damage, but anyway, keep in mind things like Roar will apply twice here if it's on, once if the initial hit happens with Roar on, and once again if the tick damage happens with Roar on. For weapon gas cloud damage, we need to follow the following formula. Gas proc damage per tick equals 0.5 times modded base damage times 1 plus faction damage bonuses times additional multipliers. Let's start filling this out. To start, we have modded base damage. For the modded base damage, I'll be using Vectus with serration for a 596.25 modded base damage. The next section we need to fill in is faction damage bonuses. We have this again because faction damage bonus is applied twice when accounting for gas cloud tick damage. In this example, we are not using a Bane mod, so we will omit this from our equation. The last thing we need to fill in is the additional multipliers. This includes things like headshot multipliers, the crit multiplier of the weapon, etc. In this case, we have a 2x crit multiplier, but this is only applied if we do score a crit. I won't be getting a headshot for this example, but in that case, most headshot multipliers are 3x. So you'd multiply these numbers together, then insert it into the formula and solve normally. Keep in mind that some enemies have a critical headshot damage bonus, which results in the final number being multiplied by an additional 2x if a crit was scored with a headshot. Next, we solve multiplication left to right, which leaves us with 0.5 times modded base damage, which we determined from our previous formula to be 596.25. This leaves us with 298.125 times any additional multipliers we want. This gives us 298.125, which is rounded up to 299 or 597 if we get a crit. Gas cloud damage doesn't round each number when accounting for multiple stacks, only the final. This means that if we were to account for a 6 gas procs using our example, it would be 298.125 times 6 and not 299 times 6. This gives us 1788.75, which rounds up to 1789. Now we have the heat and corrosive armor reduction calculation. Heat and corrosive, as well as other sources of armor reduction, are multiplicative with each other. Due to this, we'll need to know the formula to figure out how much armor reduction is actually occurring at a given time. Armor after reduction equals 1 minus 50% times 1 minus 20% plus 6% times number of corrosive stacks times 1 minus 18% times number of corrosive projections. To start solving this, we need to go from left to right, filling in the blanks. The first section we need to fill in is 1 minus 50%. This 50% is only if we have a heat proc and technically isn't always 50% as we learned from the last video that the heat strip is not instant. We'll be using a full heat proc for this example. If you don't have a heat proc, you'd omit this section from the equation. Next, we need to figure out the number of corrosive stacks and simply enter it into the equation. 
In this example, we will use six corrosive procs. If we do not have any corrosive procs, we simply omit it from the equation and continue as normal. Lastly, we need to figure out the number of corrosive projections in the group and insert that into the equation. Again, if we don't have a corrosive projection present, we simply remove the section from the equation. In this example, we will be using one corrosive projection. Now let's take a look at what we have after filling in the info. Armor after reduction equals 1 minus 50% times 1 minus 20% plus 6% times 6 times 1 minus 18% times 1. This is terribly simpler than it looks, but we absolutely have to follow our order of operations. First, let's convert our percents to decimals in order to be able to use them in the equation. Remember, to convert percents to decimals, we simply add a decimal to the end of the number and then shift it two places to the left. 50% turns to 0.5, 20% turns to 0.2, 6% turns to 0.06, and 18% turns to 0.18. Next, our order of operation tells us to solve the parentheses first. We'll solve these from left to right, solving the innermost parentheses first. First, we'll start with 1 minus 0 0.5, which gives us 0 0.5. Now we need to solve 0 0.2 plus 0 0.06 times 6. Using the order of operations, we know we need to do the multiplication and division from left to right inside the parentheses, and then addition and subtraction after. This means we must do 0 0.06 times 6, which gives us 0 0.36. Now we must do 0 0.2 plus 0 0.36, which gives us 0 0.56. Now that those parentheses are gone, we can do the one that was surrounding it. We know that 1 minus 0 0.56 is 0 0.44, so now we can remove those parentheses, and that will be our number there. Moving on to the last parentheses, following our order operations again, we need to do 0 0.18 times 1, which is simply 0 0.18. Now we must do 1 minus 0 0.18, which is 0 0.82. So now we have 0 0.5 times 0 0.44 times 0 0.82. Using our order of operations again, we solve multiplication from left to right, 0.5 times 0.44, which leaves us with 0 0.22, 0 0.22 times 0.82, which gives us 0.1804. Now we must turn this back into a percent. We do the opposite of turning it into a decimal. We will move the decimal two places to the right. This gives us 18.04%. This value is now what the target has left for armor. Using the wiki, we can see how much armor a target has at a given level, and then multiply it by our decimal number that we got. That will be their new armor value, and then you can do this formula to calculate how much reduction that results in for each hit dealt. If you're interested on how armor in Warframe works, I want to eventually get a video out for it, it's just not out yet. Go ahead and check the description for a link to see if I made it since I posted this video. Next, we have the magnetic damage calculation. Magnetic makes a bonus shield damage status effect on an enemy, and to determine how much bonus damage we are getting, we need to follow a formula. Resultant damage to shields equals modded damage times 2 plus 0.25 times number of magnetic stacks minus 1. So to start solving this, we must first figure out the modded damage. Keep in mind that this is different from modded base damage that we were working with earlier. Modded damage isn't simply calculated by looking at the weapon's total damage, as you'll need to do a different formula to calculate what the target will take based on damage type modifiers. This is figured out using formulas I won't be going over in this video, but keep an eye out for a quantized damage video linked in the description, as I'll be putting a link there once I make it. The shortest way to find out how much damage your weapon is doing without doing the math is by shooting the enemy you want to test it on in a way that doesn't result in bonus damage like crits and headshots. Then, with that number, place it into the formula. I will use my Tenora's 234 modded damage in this example. The next section we need to fill is the number of magnetic procs in parentheses. In this example, we will use two magnetic procs. To start solving this, we need to do the things in parentheses first due to the order of operations. We'll solve these from left to right, solving the innermost parentheses first. The innermost parentheses is 2 minus 1, which gives us 1. Now we have to do the next innermost parentheses, which leaves us with 0.25 times 1, which equals 0.25. Next, we must do the last section in parentheses, which is 2 plus 0.25, which gives us 2.25. Now we can multiply for our final answer, which is 526.5, which rounds up to 527. Lastly, we have the Viral Damage Calculation. Viral makes a health damage bonus status on an enemy, and to determine how much bonus damage we are getting, we need to follow a formula. Resultant damage to health equals modded damage times 2 plus 0.25 times number of Viral stacks minus 1. This is the same formula as Magnetic Damage Calculation, so go ahead and check that section of the video and pretend I'm talking about Viral, and you should figure out how to do it no problem. Keep in mind that unlike Magnetic, you'll have to account for the armor if there is armor present, the number likely won't add up properly without doing the quantization I mentioned earlier. Keep an eye out for that video when I get around to it. 
So that is it for part two of the status guide. For those that were interested in the math, I hope this helped you in some way, and I learned a ton by going through this as well. If it did help, please consider leaving a like and comment and subscribe for future breakdowns. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.